Hi, I'm Simon Carney and my guest today is David Webb from Nielsen. David, thanks for being with us. Pleasure. Are digital campaigns truly effective? They absolutely can be effective, but in the same way that traditional media campaigns can be ineffective, uh, so can digital campaigns. We saw some stats this morning that only around 18% of traditional marketing campaigns are cutting through. Um, I think the same can be said of digital campaigns. It's all about the, the planning and particularly the creative uh, that makes, makes the difference whether they work or they don't work. What have you found is the best measure of effectiveness of a cross-media campaign? So that's a, that's a tricky question. Um, and uh, we, we've, at Nielsen, we've got a, a bunch of different ways of doing that. And uh, probably the easiest way is to look at just a couple of um, media at a time. So online and TV and online uh, and print. When you start adding in all the different factors to that, uh, it gets very complicated and you start moving into sort of econometrics and uh, uh, modelling. Uh, what we can do in a slightly more straightforward uh, approach is to essentially recruit groups of people that have been exposed to different combinations of media, which is why I sort of say it's slightly more straightforward to limit it to a couple of, type, couple of medias. So if we using the same mechanisms that we use for online media, we sort of do cookie dropping to uh, establish if someone's been exposed to a online campaign. Um, we then leverage a, a methodology that's been developed in the States to establish opportunity to see for TV, let's say. What are the key measures that brands are using to judge the effectiveness of their campaigns? So it's the brand equity type measures, you know, ad, uh, ad recall, brand recall, uh, message cut through, purchase intent, favorability. So all of, all of those um, quantitative metrics stand true. I think what people, and by people I mean advertisers or um, media owners, what they're interested in is understanding the optimum mix between traditional media and digital media. And for mass reach, there still isn't any replacement for traditional media, typically. You still need that big campaign to get the message out there, and then you'll top up with digital. And it's how much do you allocate towards digital is the, is the, is the question that we need to answer. Um, but what we are starting to see is the, the multiple co contact points, so people will recall and those brand equity measures will improve if they've seen the messaging through different platforms and if they've seen the messaging through more interactive platforms. So uh, messaging team cuts through better if they've used social media, um, if they've used rich media ads or video ads. So that, those are kind of the quantitative metri measures. When we look at qualitative measures, what we're seeing increasingly is uh, people looking to sentiment uh, around discussion. So whereas you might previously have looked at focus groups to get brand, you know, brand tracking or uh, for ad testing, what we can now do is using sort of social media measurement tools, look at the sentiment that um, uh, consumers have towards brands and towards advertising. On Facebook, what's the value of a like for a brand? A way that we can measure that, we have a partnership with Facebook. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with them, um, uh, doing brand equity type studies across uh, Europe and the US. And we pulled together some stats actually on this. Um, and this was from 14 campaigns uh, in the US, which had that capability to, to, to like a campaign and to recommend to your friends. So from those campaigns, those, those are pretty good campaigns. What we saw initially, and I'll, I'll just talk about the ad recall measure. I've got the, the rest of them that you can uh, provide. Um, but just a, a basic exposure to an ad from your homepage, from your feed, um, brought out a 10% differential in ad recall. So we're comparing people that didn't see it amongst those that did. And there was a difference of 10% in people were able, able to recall uh, the, the brand. So you can see it's just using social media, there's a, there's a cut through effect. When, we, when Facebook sort of include extra bits, so the fact that your friends have seen this. So imagine there's, a, there's the, the ad, and it also says, you know, Bob and Charlie have also um, fans of uh, Virgin Atlantic, let's say. We then see the differential increasing to 16%. 
when this actually falls into your feed, so when you're looking at your, your news stream and then there's a line that says Bob and Charlie have recommended or are now fans of Virgin, we see a huge jump and the differential is then 30%. So it's quite quantifiable and quite significant the differences that, that we're seeing. So the, the takeaway really is that the more organic in nature the campaign and the more that you can involve people and they have the opportunity to recommend and share with their friends, the more effective that's going to be in terms of cut through. Are brands there yet in terms of ROI for digital? I think it's a, it's a really hard one. Um, we, we're certainly trying to answer that. Uh, uh, that. When it comes to a, 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 a more standard digital campaign, and by that I mean uh, display advertising, uh, yes, we are there. And uh, you know, given the market dynamics, we can absolutely answer those questions. When it comes to social media, it's a little bit harder to quantify, and it depends on what, the, what metrics the advertiser are setting out and trying to measure themselves by. If it's sentiment or recall and, or discussion, absolutely we can do that. If there are more soft type measures, um, that, that's where it gets a bit more fuzzy and we need to work with the advertiser. David, thanks for being with us. Sure, thanks very much.